Prime, you ready? Let's get started. All right, there we go. A special guest in the house. Check it out. It is Optimus Overkill. Uh, this vehicle has been with me for a very long time. It first started off as an Axial Dingo, uh, which was one of the first scale trucks of all time. Uh, it was a 4x4, and then we changed it into uh, a Dually. A lot of you may remember the top kick. It was gold and black. I did a whole build series on it years ago. Then I paired up with one of my buddies, David Jr., and we uh, built HD Overkill, which was a 6x6 extension uh, that had a smoke kit from Harbor Models uh, as well as a, a huge power system. Overkill in the sense every term because we had many batteries, we had six wheel steering, we had six wheel drive, uh, the sound kit, everything was very unique for this vehicle. Uh, and then it had another transformation where it became Optimus Overkill. Uh, and this was uh, done with the help of my friend Ryan uh, from Bloodshot Airbrushing. Uh, did a magnificent job and I've always always uh, had this build as an evolution it's changing all the time uh, so when this opportunity came up to switch Optimus over to some tracks today uh, I really wanted to take advantage of that and a lot of you that follow the show would say hey wait a second didn't HD overkill heavy duty overkill already rock the tracks and the answer is yes it did but now with this day and age and the way aluminum is being anodized, I was able to get my hands on a set of blue and silver tracks uh, from Asia Tees. I'll leave a link to them in the video description box down below if you want to check them out. Uh, and they fit on my old um, on my old SCX10 version one axles. That's what this is actually based off of. You can see those old axles in there from Axial, but. Um, they are still very functional, very usable, and uh, since I already had tracks on here, I don't have to do the axle hub extensions. I'll show you what I mean. I shouldn't call them extensions because really it's a steering uh, uh, set. You can see here the front hub is what I was talking about. You can see it in the plastic there. If you don't get these uh, special hubs, which is just right behind the tire, I'm going to show you in a moment, um, your tracks won't fit because they need a different depth, but let me show you what I mean. Over to the parts wall. Here are my tracks on the wall. Uh, Team Rafi, if you want to see the number here, just in case you want a number, there you are. Okay, so off camera, I already cut open each one of these bags. It comes with, each set comes with two sets of tracks, which I really like. Um, in the old days, you had to buy these differently, uh, but look at this. For snow, perfect. Really huge treads, right? Deep, things like that. Mud, I found to be a problem with tracks overall because once the mud got inside here, it made it very easy for the roller just to slide and, and to lose traction. But over uh, rocks and different terrain, light mud, this was actually very, very fun to use. But you can see here, super deep lugs. Now the other one, if you didn't want something like that, here's the other one, you can see nice and flat if you're on pavement. Now I've never used these ones because I always live off road areas, um, but if I was running pavement or any kind of grass or something like that, maybe even in the snow as well, if I wanted a nice flat pack um, where I don't have to worry about uh, digging a hole, this would be ideal. And let's look at the ultimate. Yeah, all machined. So you guys may have seen these before. Right, track styles before, especially on our show. We did this a long time ago when it was just RC four wheel drive that was offering this product. But when I saw them in uh, gray and uh, blue, or I should say brushed aluminum, I was totally in love. I had to have them for Optimus for sure. And my son has been asking me uh, to get Optimus his tracks. And so I did that. How this works is the rubber track has teeth on the inside and this roller, which is driven by this axle, uh, actually turns and turns the entire track. 
just going to take this wheel off. There you go. So now you can see the steering hub right here. Let's get in there so you can have a good look at it. Focus in on it. There you go. This only needs to be on a steering axle. So I have three steering axles. So I actually needed three sets of these uh, to help, of course, turn the tires or turn the tracks. But they also have a very specific way that these tracks fit on there. Ta-da! So this is why you need the adapter. Holds everything in place, very strong. What I wanna do first is give you a bit of a tip on uh, this roller right here. These, uh, you probably can't see it because of the, the, there we go. Is that any better? Okay, have a look here. So behind this screw, you can see like this brass collar on top of a bearing. These ones have a little bit of Loctite in them already. I wouldn't really worry about these, but these on these track rollers right here, this screw, this screw, that one, and this one, they're all fairly loose and they come this way just from the factory. I don't know why they don't have Loctite on all of them, but regardless, we're hobbyists. It's not a big deal to drop some Loctite on there. So using liquid Loctite can be a little bit of a pain because you just want to use a little bit. And so what I usually do is just use a little water bottle cap like this and add a few drops of liquid Loctite to it. This way, when I back the screws out, like this one for example, I can lift the screw out Dunk it in the Loctite, just a little bit, right? A little will do you just fine. And then I'm just dropping it right back in place. And then just cinch it up just firm, but not too much. I don't want to strip anything out, especially when we're here to make it stronger. And you can see this one just backs out super simple. It's just a matter of any time you're having aluminum on aluminum or metal on metal, you want to have some Loctite in there because any movement or vibration is going to back that screw out and chances are you're not going to notice it when you're out on the trail and it's just most frustrating when that happens. And then after a few hours when everything is dry and your Loctite is all secure, what I like to do is to remove this uh, area where you'd be tightening up the wheel nut on the axle stub. Get in here, pull this bearing out, or get in with a dry lubricant, uh, like a lithium-based lubricant. Go and oil every single one of these bearings in here, front and back. So make sure to flip it over, get both sides. Uh, also, in this area, get in with all that lubricant in there, in there and make sure you try to get rid of that sound, which is impossible just because of the way it's built. It's actually rubbing metal on metal. But if you flip it over, you can almost get rid of all sound altogether. So just keep it well lubricated because if it's going to get wet or sandy or mud or anything, you don't want to be using anything that's sticky like grease, but you want to use a dry lubricant that keeps everything rolling smooth. Okay, my last step, of course, is just to install it. So I'm going to remove this area here, take the cap off, lift it into place, slide it over the bracket, Use your cross wrench or whatever you're using, tighten that up, and then just put the end cap back on. Now careful with these, I have seen these uh, lost out on the trail before, um, so if you want to get in there with some thread lock as well and maybe do that, that's a good idea. It does have a rubber um, o-ring on the inside to help you get a nice firm seal, and uh, I don't remember that being there last time, maybe that will help it from backing off, but who knows. But there you go, my friends. Check it out. Ba -ba. <laughs> so there he is, guys. All set up on tracks again. I say it's been about darn time. I had so many viewers write me over the years to say, please put Optimus back on tracks. 
Uh, and as soon as I saw the colors had come out and they were available from Team Raffi, I thought, okay, uh, I'm going to scoop these up because I've never seen them before in these colors. And I thought, ah, sometimes you see things come and go in the RC world. And uh, Optimus truly is just a, a, a beautiful showpiece for me. He's been inspiring me for years. And it just goes to show how far one RC can really go in being built and rebuilt and, and the fun you can have. And there we are. I want to build a trailer for Optimus, but the trailer would be enormous. I still think it should be done. Sorry about the light there, guys. There, that's better. But yeah, something like huge that came up tall and like really far back. But Optimus is about, you know, at least 12 inches high. This might be about 13 inches high to the top of the stack. And his trailer should come up at least, you know, like what? 15 inches, maybe 14 inches. It would be enormous, but I think that's a project I'd like to work on. Okay, so I unhooked Optimus's uh, sound card only because it really reverberates loudly here in the shop, but I do have uh, smoke on demand. So you can see coming out of the stacks here, well, momentarily, I guess, there, now you can see it. So I have smoke. Even though it looks like I've blown a head gasket, you can't quite get black smoke. There really is no way to do that yet. Um, also, the six-wheel steering that I was discussing. So here, we'll have a quick look at that. So there's the front. Very strong servos there to be moving like that. And then, of course, Optimus is a crawler. He's not really made for speed. First time you guys are seeing it roll right here. Nice. So normally I'd have the sound kit, of course, rumbling away. The smoke would be going. 